Welcome to the Liberati Mansion. Welcome to Under the Vegas Sun, looking at the people, the events and the news surrounding Las Vegas and the entire Vegas Valley. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. We are live from the Liberace Mansion. You know, sitting here uh, in front of this million rhinestone piano, uh, I have to be reminded of all the great entertainment that took place inside of this mansion. This amazing man, Liberace, of course, was key to all of that. In all the years that he played and all of the entertainment he gave to millions upon millions of people. Today on our program, we'll also talk about entertainment. Entertainment Today, by two gentlemen who've been around for a long time, to be honest with you. And they have, uh, they have really been involved with what are called the standards. Their names, Sonny Charles and Joe Lano. And today, you'll not only hear them talk about the music that is around today, but also hear them sing some of the great pieces of years gone by. That's on our program. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Keith Evans at the Lion Habitat Ranch. We'd like you to come out and visit our ranch. There's 38 lions, a giraffe that paints, ostriches, emus, and birds. We do school tours, general admission, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and behind the scenes tours every day of the week. Besides coming in as general admission, you can also pay extra to help our animals, and you can feed the giraffe. You can feed one of the lions. <laughs> or you can have Ozzy paint a custom canvas for you. You can also buy Ozzy paintings in the gift shop. While we do our demonstrations at 12 and 2 of Ozzy painting, all those canvases are available for purchase. In addition to everything you can do here in person, you can find us on the website, lionhabitatranch.org, where you can make your reservations online or buy your paintings online. Thank you very much. Please come. Hey, it's Mark Chinook from Monday's Dark, and you are watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. Black Pearl, pretty little girl, let me put you up where you belong. Those 13 words, those 13 words, literally became an anthology for women all across the world, thanks to our very special guest on our program today, a man who not only was part of an incredible group that actually did that song and made it a hit, but a man that's been around and has done amazing things in music ever since. Joining him is yet another amazing man, a man who has toured some of the greatest places in the world, even as far as Queen Elizabeth. Our very special guest today, two gentlemen that I've known for a long time. First, Sonny Charles, welcome to our program. Thank you, Steve. And Thank also, you. Joe Lano. Welcome, Thank gentlemen. You, so let me go back to what I just read, those 13 words that are up here that have been there for a long time. I remember uh, being in the studio at WDAS Radio in Philadelphia. Okay. Uh, and I remember the checkmates coming yeah. in, meeting with Jimmy Bishop and Georgie Woods, <laughs> pushing this song called Black Pearl. Um, the checkmates LTD yes. were just a new found group. Um, this was the first big hit you had? It was, yes. Did you ever think that it would be what it became? I mean, it really, truly became an anthology for women around the world. Well, you know what, when, when uh, Phil Spector first presented this song to us, Phil Spector was a producer. Great producer. And, and yeah, we used to call him the killer producer, but we didn't know. <laughs> 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 but, but anyway, he, uh, he, pre he uh, presented this song to us. It wasn't the first hit from that album. The first one was a song called Love Is All I Have To Give. And uh, it got a little chart action, but it didn't really go that far. But he did this one. This song was written by Tony Wine. Tony Wine, uh, it's probably one of our most famous songs. It's meow, 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 meow. Really? <laughs> the meow, meow song. Yeah. No. Yeah, the cat, the cat <laughs> song. But anyway, she, she toured with Tony Orlando. And, uh, but anyway, her and a, and a guy, Sheldon uh, Irving, I think his name, uh, wrote this song and Phil presented it to us and uh, it ended up being uh, the theme song for the Miss Black America contest for a few years mm. so it was a it was a pretty iconic song you know back then words meant everything oh, to of course a song. Sure. back then it was I, I became 
very, very good friends back then with, with two people um, that, that I, I believe were some of the great songwriters uh, of, of all time, uh, Tommy Bell and Linda Creed. And, yes. and, and, and Bell and Creed wrote words. They wrote songs that people wanted to listen to, that told a story, that talked about love and faith and all of those things. Absolutely, you know, and it's the, that's the whole uh, key to being a good songwriter, if, is if you can develop a story melodically that, um, you know, that the story has meaning and it's something that can live for, like all those great standards. Mm -hmm. They just live forever and ever and ever because no matter who sings it, they'll tell the story in a different way. But, uh, and it can almost take a different twist, the story will. But it's still good enough that it holds up no matter who sings it. Joe, you've accompanied some of the great performers of all time. Uh, you truly have. Um, Lena Horne, uh, an amazing, amazing singer. But I'm not mistaken, you went with Lena to England and performed in front of Queen Elizabeth, if I'm not mistaken, correct? correct? Command performance. Command performance. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you played with uh, people like Mel Torme. We had his son right. on the program. I played you, for his son, too. Did you really? Yeah, which, it, which son are we talking about? Steve. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, and you, you, you were with Steve and Edie for a long time. That's how I got here. And, and it was all about you playing. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was the sounds, it was the words that went along with it. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. You missed that? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't really miss it because I still do that. You know, what but I'm you don't saying, hear I'm, it on I'm, radio I miss, anymore. I miss it in, in, in the business. Right, yeah. You know. The yeah. business has changed. Oh, you know, I mean. Totally. It's, you know, there's no meaning to the music anymore. Everything is just a beat. It's, it's a feeling, you know, it's all about, you know, feeling a groove. You know, the words don't mean anything. Well, you know. And I keep on ho having hope. I, I just, Bruno Mars just put out a brand new song, for instance that it was the first song that I, I listened to the words and they, they had meaning to it again. Mm -hmm. Do you kind of think as though we we now are going to go back to that? Because, but the problem, I'll be honest with you, the problem is, is that you don't have voices like Sonny Charles anymore. Right. You don't have people that can sing without all of the acoustics that go along with it. You don't have to hide a voice through the electronics. Right. Uh, when Sonny sings, uh, you hear a magnificent voice. You hear what it is, and rather you, than you the, hear the emotion in it. You hear the emotion. That's right. Well, you know the thing is, uh, I remember reading a Frank Sinatra quote, mm -hmm. and he said, "The trouble today," and this was this was back a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Quite Sinatra, Sinatra was was still around then, and he said, "The young performers don't have any places to fail." There was a place in Las Vegas called the. Pussy Catagogo. Yeah. That you wouldn't think of any place by the name of Pussy Catagogo, yeah, yeah. but it was a place where where, organ, where where bands like Checkmates Ltd and others really Checkmates got Checkmates Ltd, their, Doby Gray. They all got their sound. Sly there. and the Family Stone. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the uh, uh, I Love You Yesterday, uh, Spiral Staircase. Mm -hmm. right. uh, all of those bands came through there because there were there was a circuit that you played. Mm -hmm. And, well, you didn't make much money, but you didn't need much money back in those days, you know. But, uh, but those were the places where you, where you played and you got to watch other performers do a real performance, you know, because then you just couldn't be, uh, you just couldn't stand there and, and just run down a bunch of top 40 tunes. And you couldn't, and you couldn't lip sync it. You had to sing. Right. And, you, and, and, and you had to play. You were, right. not, you were not just lip syncing to, to me, right. you were right. playing. Yeah. Our first uh, audition here was with Davy Victorson, who ended up being the <laughs> first entertainment director of the uh, Caesars. Right. We failed because, I mean, we were good enough to get the audition. You. I can't picture you failing. We, we, the only reason we failed wasn't our music or everything. We didn't have an act. We oh. just played music. We just did songs. Sweet uh, Louie didn't have an act? No. I mean, he wasn't flamboyant <laughs> at all. But they say, you got to get an act. So we went back and we worked on... Uh, you know, doing skits and doing stuff like that. So Sonny was the lead singer uh, of, uh, of the Checkmates LTD. Sweet Louie was the alter ego of yes, <laughs> yes. Of the, yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, he was He was a true character. He was a true character. True character. <laughs> I miss him. Uh, I had a guy, in 2007 I had and a I guy miss come him. to me and say, I'd like to try to work on a, 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 a comedy show treatment for television. 
about Louis's antics. Oh, yeah. Oh, he has a list of them that's absolutely hilarious. Mm -hmm. They're bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> But, but uh, yeah, he was, he was a true character. But all the performers, Joe, that you were with had their own little quirky things as well. I mean, you performed with Steve and Edie a long time. A lot of what they did on stage was not just singing. They had a comedy routine oh, sure. most of the time. Yeah, right. And, and that right. was important to that. Right. And, yeah, and they all had, and, and there was patter, you know, that, that, what you're talking about, mm -hmm. okay? And that patter led to the setup of the next song. Right. You know what I'm saying? There was like, it all, it all was like a big story from the beginning to the end, you know, but but you don't have that anymore either. It's that showmanship yeah. that they had mm -hmm. back then right. that you don't see today. Well, the you, thing you is, see performers go from song to song to song to song and nothing with the audience. The thing is, you know, you got to get comfortable enough with yourself so you're not afraid to let people know who you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I know you know this from, from, from being a, uh, an announcer and being a, a uh, that's not the word I wanted to use. But, but, but you know what I mean. Be nice with the words you use. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you know what I mean. Uh, uh, a person that, that stands in front of people and uses their voice. An MC. And you you yeah. got to let them know who you are. You have to. There's a certain amount of likability you have to have. Right, right. You know, uh, and, and that's, that's partly skill and uh, partly talent, I think. But, mm. but I think a big dose of it is skill. There, there's, a, there's a lot of what each of you have. Um, for those in the audience, uh, the two of them now combine with an amazing lady called Pia Zadora here in Las Vegas at a place called Pia's Place, which is not strange enough, but it's, but it's inside what I can best describe as an Italian restaurant. Great Italian yes. restaurant, but it's inside. Yeah. But this lounge that's mm -hmm. there, Pia's Place, is just a delightful place where you again can perform, both of you, along with Pia, can perform to an audience at an enjoyable and an yes. enjoyable evening. On your own, are you bringing back what was Las Vegas? It, it feels it feels that comfortable. Mm -hmm. it, does. it does. It, it does. It, it feels uh, that comfortable. It's whatever the audience wants, right? Well, it depends on how the night's going. In other words, if they're really into it, then mm -hmm. she's going to stay on longer. Sure. Then we're going to stay on longer. Yeah. You, know, you just have to feel it out. So it all happens. It's all spontaneous. It's not like, you know, we're doing this. Yeah, 45 and, and then you're off. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, it doesn't work that way. It, it, it is about um, entertaining. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not just performing. I think if you have a voice, you could probably get up and perform. Uh -huh. But entertaining is what sometimes we're lacking today. Well, you know, and, and uh, that's it exactly. I mean, there, I've said this over. There are millions of good singers. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of great singers, but there's only a few people who can sustain a career. That's right. Because it takes more than just a talent. It takes all that other stuff that goes with it. You know, uh, um, people liking you. You can't be a jerk all the time. Right. You know. And both of you have seen times change, and both of you have seen um, things over over time. Um, maybe become different. Hmm. Um, do you worry about what tomorrow brings? Well, at, at this point, I'll be honest with you, I don't worry at all. Really? I don't too, worry we're about too it. old to worry. <laughs> you know why? We've done it all, uh, right? Be, be, because if I stop singing now, I can still live my right. life in the same way I live now. Okay. We're going to come back. When we come back, I want to talk about the one part of this community that everybody's a little bit afraid to talk about. And, and that is how My neighborhood. the town has changed entertainment-wise, yeah. and, and, and what has occurred. It's, mm. I know it's going to be an honest discussion, um, but I think it's important for people to talk about it. So we'll, we'll get to that in, in just okay. a couple of moments. Stay with us. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Eamon Springall of Stitched at the Cosmopolitan, and you're watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. The music of life, entertainment. 
what it's all about. Las Vegas has been known for that for a long, long period of time. A very special guest on the program once again, two men I've known for a long time, Sonny Charles and Joe Lana. Welcome back to the Joe. Thank you. Okay, so let's be let's be honest here. Um, for those of us who've been around for a long time, for those of us who've been in this town for a long time, there has been a dramatic change. When the last of the great Las Vegas shows closed, um, it, I, I felt it in my heart because Las Vegas was based upon those shows in a lot of different ways, mm -hmm. whether it be Foley's Berger or the Lido show or Jubilee, whichever the name was at the time. Uh, a lot of Las Vegas began that way. You had great singers that were part of those shows. You had great entertainers part of those shows. It went away. Over time, not only did that go away, but the great stars that sometimes played Las Vegas changed. And with them, it also changed the type of shows that were here. Instead of the 800 room um, showrooms that were still intimate enough that still had the maitre d that had his hand crooked in the back so he could uh -huh. get a couple of dollars you had now had 1800 seat stadiums what i call stadiums mm -hmm. and, and 22,000 seat, seat stadiums that changed because you needed the names then to be able to fill up that many seats on top of that it was the lounges that went away the lounges that I believe helped make Las Vegas, Las Vegas. And a lot of people say it's the corporations that have changed all of that over the period of time. When you had people like Major Riddle who, who owned casinos, when you, when you had um, uh, different owners uh, of Las Vegas hotels, uh, e even when Caesars first opened before it became a huge corporation, uh, it was still that idea. Have the corporations changed the entertainment in Las Vegas so dramatically that people and will never get back to that again? I don't think it will go back. I don't think that there's a, really? there's a reason for them to go back. Uh, the thing about it is, you know, when they, when they first started killing the lounges, we were saying that this is the place where people can the finish seeing the show, then they go to the lounge show, and then there's another show again. Then they go back to the lounge because the lounges were there was a lounge Stop that. there were lounge headliners. Mm -hmm. So there would be a name act. It would be like uh, Frank Sinatra in the room. Mm -hmm. When you left Frank Sinatra's show, that'd be Louis Prima. No, that'd, that'd be the Temptations. Right. Or there'd be uh, Louis Prima mm -hmm. or the Checkmates. Right. And and so the people would stay. And then the next show comes up. Well, let's go back and let's see the show. Let's go back and see the show again. Or whatever it is, right after the Checkmate show, there might be uh, the Fifth Dimension. Because right. the lounges had all of those great record acts. Right. And so people stayed in the hotel all night long. And I think that was the, the whole uh, plan for each casino to keep the people in their casino as long as they could. Nowadays, it's a production show. And I'm not knocking it because they're great production shows. Uh, Britney Spears and, and uh, 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 Jennifer Lopez and, and all of those great acts that come through town. They're huge with production shows. Production shows. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they're, they're like the, uh, the Lido show used to be back in those days. Right. But, but the thing is, somebody has to pay for that. And guess what? It ain't the hotel. Nope. <laughs> you know, it's, it's being brought in. Somebody's producing those shows. And that's what happened with the lounges is that those lounge rooms, rooms that size, have, have to be four walled, which means somebody's got to pay for it and rent it from the, from the hotel. Mm -hmm. And that was the whole thing. The many, the few times that I've been offered that opportunity, and I said no because, how can I perform, in counting seats at the same time? Right. That's right. You know what I mean? Because right. of the, the, trying to. You're pay either for one it. or the other. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying, here I am at the place, I packed the place, you guys make all the money. Right. I'm trying to make a living. Living. Sorry, I don't want a salary. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. you guys make all the money, and if I don't get enough, then I'm out. Right. And I invested all this stuff, and I'm broke. Mm -hmm. You know, so I've seen that happen on so many occasions. So, Joe, yeah. you, you performed in lounges with a lot of these names. Right. But you know how that, that the corporations did this 
to themselves, unbeknownst to them, um, you know, to, to them, because what happened in those days, you'd have a star playing at this hotel, and he's making $50,000 a week, and that hotel would say, hey, we want to get him, let's give him $75,000. Yeah. And then, da, 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 da. And by the it time, it became a bidding war. Then it became a bidding war. So now what happens, now all of a sudden, you got acts that are making two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 a week. Yeah. They've got, if not more. They've got, they've got small yeah. rooms. Mm -hmm. Uh, when the mob had the town, they didn't care because the gambling took care, took of, care of it. But now you got corporations. The corporations got to show a profit. Okay, All right. So now what? Ha and, and each department has to make profit. In other words, it's not like the gambling takes care of anything. Well, That's now gambling yeah. is only thirty-five percent of the total right. revenues within right. oh, within the know. casino industry. Yeah. So they inadvertently did it themselves. You know, by by bidding themselves out. So now, you know, after it got to a certain amount of money, they said, well. Let's just, we can buy a, a show for $100,000 and put a whole show in here instead of having one star for $300,000 yeah. a week. And that's how we started getting all these old shows and this show and, you know. Because you needed right. to be able to get a plethora of people in a showroom mm -hmm. at a single time that ran for a very specified period of time to get mm -hmm. them out of their seats and into the casinos right. or yeah. into the restaurants. Right. It's whatever whatever that is. And a matter of fact, today, there's more money spent on that type of entertainment and restaurants than there is on gambling. Mm -hmm. And you know what, and I think that's one of the reasons there's no, there used to be a, a dinner show and then a midnight show. Mm -hmm. But now it's just Does one show. Does anybody ever do a dinner show anymore? It's, no. It's just, it's just one show. Exactly. Uh -huh. It's one you, show. You, you know, when one show costs you a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks to walk in and you, and you see that one show. And, and then uh, if you want to go see another, the lounge, you got to pay fifty bucks or um, thirty and bucks or whatever. Hundred dollars is. is cheap. I mean, there's oh, there's, oh, yeah. there's a lot of no, performers yeah. in Las Vegas yes. that are two seventy five and three hundred dollars mm -hmm. for a seat. And yeah. then the the nightclub thing that's going on now with with the, oh. with, with all of the DJs. Oh yes, big money. Just that's huge. I mean, a, a DJ is it's not unusual for a DJ to make a quarter million dollars a night. I know. Mm -hmm. it's a night. Huge. It's huge. Uh, they're they're as big as the rock stars. Yes, they are. And. Uh, so, uh, but I look at it like this, and I've, I've talked to a lot of the people from my generation in this, and I'm saying, you know, this is the way it is. We had our day. Mm -hmm. You know, we, 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 we had our time. But you still have your day. I mean, to, yeah. let, let's be honest, you still have your day. You still have people that go into Pia's place, and they can't yeah. wait to see mm -hmm. Sonny and Joe and Pia perform. Oh, sure. But right. it's a different audience. Well, they're the people that can relate to that. Right. Yeah. Know, th that were around during those days that know what that kind of entertainment's about. And today we have all of all of the shows like The Voice and America's Got Talent and all of these mm. type of shows that young people and, uh, and people think that they, if they get on there, their career's ahead of them. But the one thing that, 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 I, uh, that I see that's problematic today is that there's no place for young talent to, to groom themselves. To groom themselves. No right. place to fail. Right. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, and and that's the whole thing. Now, now, going to places like Austin and and uh, uh, Memphis and all of those little uh, midwestern uh, southern, southern. Uh, uh, towns, there's a lot of live bands going. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, they're not performing. They're playing. They're playing. Mm -hmm. There's the difference. They're just playing, and they're, and they're doing a bunch of original songs, and, and they're playing, and, and uh, uh, I don't know if you're working for the door or what, but uh, you don't see any real... The thing about Bruno Mars to me is that he's an act. He comes out, it's an act. It's like, a, you know... It's like, like J-Lo, it's an act. Yeah. It, it is a full, yeah, full they, act. They put something into the performance, not just into the, the music. And, I, and the music is the most important part of it. Right. To me, because we don't have the music, there's no reason to do mm -hmm. the, but the rest I, of it. But we can remember the songs that we sang yeah. in, in the 70s, in yeah. the 80s. I don't know if people, young people today, can remember the song from last year, That's right. no less 20 years That's ago, it. because the, they, there was no connection to that. There's you can't, you can't whistle a song from the top 40. Mm -hmm. I can't whistle anyway, so it's no, okay. No, 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 what I'm saying, I mean, I mean, you know, back in the day, you know, you could see people, they'd be whistling or, or humming a song. Yeah. But now, you know. Like I knew the world, words to Black Pearl because it's yeah, up yeah, here, and yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Right. Okay, so I'm going to ask you guys to do me a favor. Um, okay. I want you to stay for another show, 
and, and, and stay with us uh, and, and do another show because I am not going to let the two of you leave here, leave this wonderful place that was the, the center of music because of Liberace without playing and singing. So would you stay around for another show for us? Absolutely. Sure. Okay. Would you do that? Cool. Absolutely. Y you know, you know it, it's, it is about entertainment. N not just performing, but entertaining. And I think you're going to see in our next show, two gentlemen entertain you. Uh, and we'll talk more about this whole idea about entertainment today. But, but I want you to, to be able to, to hear what entertainment is all about. We'll be back with some closing words in just a couple of seconds. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Visha Calderon, an immigration attorney. Migrating to the United States legally can be tricky and costly. My firm offers fast, professional, and cost-efficient service for you and your family. News. In today's world, news has become even more important in our lives. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. For some 40 years, Las Vegas has been my home and it's been good to me. Now, I want to give back. That's why I started The Now Report, the independent voice newspaper, fair, balanced, unbiased, online and mobile, and it's free. The time has come for an independent voice because news is important. Hi, I'm Frankie Shinta, downtown's king of entertainment. You're watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. Well, I can promise you this, on our next program, uh, you will hear both Sonny and Joe play together. And I'm, I'm telling you, it will take you back a little bit. You'll remember some of the standards of years gone by and how good it used to sound. That'll be on our next program. I, I really do appreciate both of them coming on the program and giving us their insights about Las Vegas and everything else that has taken place. So we'll see you on our next program next week. Until then, please be safe and enjoy life. Under the Vegas Sun. Vegas. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. I've been proud to host the TV show Under the Vegas Sun. We've had mayors and entertainers and some of the true movers and shakers of Las Vegas. Well, we're growing again. We'll now be seen in 209 cities in America through our network, Walk TV, as well as in six foreign countries and in Las Vegas. We'll also be seen four times each week on Cox Communications, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m., and now Sundays at 7 p.m. on channels 1096 and 96. I just wanted to say thank you. This has been a presentation of VATV.